since you mentioned the neg- uh, negativity bias, could you take uh, maybe a quick second to explain to listeners what that is? Yeah. Well, we all kind of know what it's like from the inside out. Say you have a job review, a performance review, and your boss gives you 10 kinds of feedback and nine of them are positive and one of them is room for improvement. Well, that's the one you think about for the rest of the day or yep. complain about to your partner that night, right? Or, or my boss doesn't understand me. Dude. Or you have interactions, let's say, with uh, your partner or a friend and nine of them are positive and one is kind of irritating. Well, what's the one you review as you fall asleep and are still thinking about when you wake up the next morning? Uh, so that's our nature. We're like that. Why are we like that? Uh, The key idea here is that our ancestors over 600 million years during the evolution of the nervous system needed both to get carrots and avoid sticks. Carrots like food, sticks like predators. All right. The negativity bias is really useful if you're trying to work in a war zone or you grow up in what feels like a war zone. Yeah. But for most of us, it's like a it's like a feature that's now a bug in the underlying machinery. Uh, we overreact to the negative and we underreact to the positive. We overlearn from what's bad and we underlearn from what's good. You know, we're good at learning what's from what's bad. We're bad at learning from what's good, even though learning from what's good, learning from experiences that are usually emotionally positive of the psychological resources we want to grow inside ourselves, like calm strength or gratitude or loving connection with others, a sense of secure attachment to others, for example, those are good things to grow in ourselves and they feel good. One of the functions of positive emotions broadly is to mark and motivate the experiences that are good for us, which are the first step of growing good inner strengths, good psychological resources inside ourselves. So it's it's kind of unfortunate. You know, we're bad at learning from the good. We're good at learning from the bad. And the takeaway from that for me is to recognize what is a problem, recognize injustice, recognize suffering, recognize threats, deal with things. There you are. You're climbing, right? To go back to that metaphor, you're climbing. You know, be aware of how far above your protection you are or whether a storm is coming in or whether your partner's being sloppy in their safety procedures. You know, recognize those things on the one hand, but on the other hand, try not to marinate in them. Try not to reinforce that irritation or anxiety or or feelings of inadequacy because the brain is really vulnerable to that. And meanwhile, Grow the inner strengths inside that help you cope with challenges outside yourself or inside yourself without going into the red zone. Like with rock climbing, you can be in challenging situations, but because you've got resources inside, including your skills and your attitudes and your self-awareness, you don't need to freak out, right? And then over time, also, really, 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 in addition to growing specific resources by, you know, helping the neurons that are firing together to actually wire together to leave those residues behind. In addition to that, a key takeaway is when you have these authentic moments throughout your day when, ah, you just kind of have a chance to settle in the green zone, ah, just a moment of ease, a moment of reassurance. Like with you, I'm having a lot of fun here. Just there's a fellowship with you here. Just, ah, it's not more than what it is, but it's not less than what it is. Take it in. So then you gradually um, build up this underlying uh, sense of well-being that you carry with you increasingly. And it's because it's uh, internalized, because it's literally hardwired into your nervous system. You develop more of a positive mood, a sense of resilient well-being as your underlying core of being. It becomes increasingly unconditional because it doesn't depend on on external conditions anymore since you've grown it inside yourself over time. 